Hey, what's going on everyone? Vega here from Serpent X Tech, and in this video I'm gonna show you how to find the best overclock settings for your bit axe. Now, we're looking at the Gamma currently, uh, and this does work on some of the older ones, as well as the Nerd Axe, and thanks to our colleague uh, and friend, Retro Mike, it made it very easy for us to run a benchmark using Docker, but I will link to the full repo down in the description. First, let's switch over to the computer to go through the steps to run the benchmark. So I did fork the original developer, Mr. V777 uh, repo over to my GitHub, but it doesn't matter, whichever one you want. Uh, I, again, it'll be linked down in the description. And this automated benchmark will take into account the voltage regulator temperature, the chip temperature, the efficiency, so on and so forth, and try to find the best settings and configuration and give you a set of parameters that you can choose and of course what i would recommend doing is after running the benchmark choose whatever fits your needs but you can run it two different ways via python the the native setup or through docker but retro mic again made it a little bit easier for us what i want to show you is just a docker way uh, and there are going to be some steps that you need to do but i'm going to link to a video down below for how to get because my favorite thing to do is to use just wsl right so I'll open up a command prompt I go to WSL and I'm in my Docker container or one of my containers. I can specify the container and it doesn't affect the, the operating system, the main operating system. So I love Docker. Uh, RetroMic is converting me. But anyways, um, this way is just so much easier and I'll give you a simple command, but you got to get to this point. So there's a video down in the description for how to install WSL, which is Windows Subsystem Linux and Docker Desktop. Once you have both of them up and running, uh, what we can do is actually uh, type in a command to make sure that it's working with hello world. So we're going to go to that right now, open up another command prompt window. And once you have done everything, go to uh, type in Docker run hello world. I want to say if I did this right, there you go. Hello from Docker. This message shows installation appears to be working correctly. So Docker is installed and we are good to go. Once you have done all that, this is basically the command, but I'm going to give you one even better. It's going to be linked down in the description straight from the source himself. Uh, and that's going to be this command right here. Docker run dash dash RM, the retro mic slash bit axe benchmark and the IP address of your bit axe. Don't copy my IP address. Go find the IP address of your bit axe or your device. Make sure you replace that. And then V is for voltage and then F is for frequency. Now we're starting off low and trying to find the most efficient configuration, but then I played around with it and I got some better adjustments. Now, again, to do this, if we type in uh, CMD to open up our command prompt and type in WSO, we're in our Docker environment. If I copy this command on over and run it, which I'm actually probably going to change the IP to what my nerd acts, which it does work on. So I ran the command. I made some parameter changes, uh, voltage 1200, frequency 550, but you can see on the nerd axis at 575. So even though I hit enter and the window looks like it's not doing anything, it is actually doing something. And if I type in uh, in a different window, right, go back to WSL, uh, which I'll show you right now, and type in uh, Docker stats, um, we can see what containers are open and that it's doing something, which is what that previous window was. I just wanted to show you how to do that. So you're going to see this window not do anything. Be patient. And Retro Mike does advise that it could take up to 20 minutes or so before you start seeing any output. So just hang tight. The full benchmark could take an hour or two, but you will get periodic outputs on your screen so the window's not showing anything but if we go to the minor we see that it's changing stuff right it's changing the frequency it's making some adjustments it's taking into account the power draw the asic chip and it does this one doesn't have a voltage regulator temperature so it doesn't have that parameter to adjust off of like the bit x but it does take take into account everything and make adjustments now the actual uh output when you first install this thing right docker run the command that I just showed you uh, and the IP, it's going to pull that. And then it's going to say, you know, getting the latest update, install, download, 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 download. And then it's going to be download newer image and then you're good to go. And if you run the command, but you get an error on it, you might not have the right IP for it. And that error looks like this, right? Error fetching the default system settings. 
Uh, it tells us what the issue is. Just read that error and try to negotiate what's going on. Uh, in my case, it was just, it couldn't talk to the device. IP may have been wrong or the device is offline. Now there is a disclaimer from the creator of this benchmark tool that it will stress your BitX or NerdX or your BitX variant. Be mindful as it goes through the various uh, frequencies and voltages that while there are safeguards in place, because it's running these devices outside their standard parameters, that there is a risk and they assume no responsibility if you wind up damaging your particular device. So use this benchmark at your own risk with a certain understanding. If you're not familiar with it and you're getting the 1.2 tera hash that you should be getting from your bid axe, then just leave it alone. But right now you can see I'm, I'm doing pretty good on my bid axe. Uh, it is jumping around. We're at 12.03, 12.3 joules per tera hash. And that's going to change. I might go up to 15.3 joules per tera hash or 16 but let me show you the some of the before and after so the command again is in the description super easy after you install wsl uh subsystem linux and just throw a ubuntu distro on there and then the docker uh desktop which again will be in a video link below and run this command you just need to sit tight and let it run and eventually it's going to output stuff and this is exactly what happened on the right hand side or some of the uh, settings that it found to be the best for the nerd axe and on the left hand side is the bit axe and there's a lot of different information here so at the very top you can see we had a voltage regulated temperature of 68 asic chip temperature of 65 we were doing 1.3 tera hash at 16.33 joules per tera hash but we could become more efficient than that and lo and behold as it continued to test and adjust we did right dropping the voltage down from 1120 to 1080 it, uh, keeping the same frequency of 625, we were able to get right below 1.3 tera hash with the, uh, you know, the temperature of the chip dropping down a couple degrees and even the voltage regulator dropping down three degrees. So that's the goal is you want to make your thing as efficient as possible. And it does output the benchmark results into a JSON file if you want to go and find that file. Or you can just grab a screenshot of your various settings notate that and then if you wanted to you could always go into the settings of your device and manually plug in whatever configuration you would like to do but what i want to say is the before and after is pretty cool so here we're running about 18.35 joules per tera hash on the bit axe getting the advertised 1.2 tera hash average uh, but you can see the temperature on the ASIC chip was almost 70 degrees, 69.3. The voltage regulator getting a little hot, 71 degrees Celsius. Frequency at 575. I got a second before as well. Same frequency, again, 71 degrees on the voltage regulator, 69 on the ASIC chip. Only doing about uh, 18. This this number is wrong, right? It's it, The average is 19.5 joules per terahash or 19.7 joules per terahash. Uh, but then after... We definitely made this guy very efficient because we were sitting on an average around 16.17, 16.15 joules per tera hash, sometimes dipping down into the 15.2, as you saw in the results it outputted, but also dropping down the ASIC chip temperature by two to three degrees and the voltage regulator temperature by two to three degrees, uh, but still getting a higher frequency going from 575 to 625. So it can yield you pretty decent improvements. Uh, and then while it does work on the nerd axe as well, because not all the 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 prim parameters that this benchmark is looking for is on the nerd axe, just be mindful, just give it some time and you should be good to go. Like still nothing here has been outputted, but I know it's working because we can see the processes in the Docker stats and we can see that it's making changes through the miner by logging into it via IP. Now, real cool, I want to do a before and after test on ck solo right you could see the 24-hour test uh over here right we were averaging about 1.14 tera hash on the gamma versus the nerd axe which was for 434 giga hash uh let's see what happens after 24 hours the before and after um because the biggest thing is efficiency but i just want to see what the hash rate levels out to on uh the doctor's pool and the performance that we just gained by running this benchmark. If you have any questions, hit me up in the comment section. Again, everything will be linked down in the description, how to get WSL going, how to get Docker going, and the GitHub repo for this benchmark. Uh, but honestly, I would just use the one that, uh, the command that Retro Mike made super easy for us and Docker and call it a day. 
because it's super easy to run. You just got to be patient for the benchmark to actually complete and output that information to you. So after 24 hours, we went from about 1.14 terahash on the gamma, and then the nerd was 434 gigahash up to 1.25 terahash instead of 1.14 and then 485 giga hash on the Nerdax. So we did improve not only reducing our power draw, but also improving our actual hash rate. 434 again, up to 485, 1.14 terahash to 1.25 terahash. So the benchmark is really good utility for you to optimize per your conditions of your Nerdax or Bitax. Just be patient with it. And I hope that you got some useful information out of this video. But do me a favor on the way out. Hit that like button. Get subscribed. Hit notification bell to stay up to date. As well as checking out the links in the description. Not only to useful bits of information uh, that we mentioned earlier in the video. But other links that help support the channel. And you all have yourself a wonderful day. Take care. I'll catch you in the next one.